Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. I'll try and make the most out of the next five minutes of your time and tell you a bit about how and why to use encrypted disks in an HPC environment. I will also talk about what that means for the performance of the system. First things first, a few of you might be wondering why we're even talking about this. Encryption on a supercomputer, isn't there more important stuff like speeding up calculation? Well, on a usual supercomputer, networks and file systems are shared. Normally this is fine, but if you are researching genetic makeup on government-owned confidential data, that's another matter altogether. At CERFSERA, where I spent the last two months, this was the case. The Central Bureau of Statistics, short CBS, is a Dutch government institution and they own a huge amount of confidential data like residence addresses or data about all the twins born in the Netherlands over the last years. For the researchers, this data is very interesting, but the CBS has to ensure the privacy of this data. So Surfsera set up a secure environment where researchers work on virtual machines running on the supercomputer. These virtual machines can be completely configured in a way that there are no network connections to the outside world possible. Nevertheless, the data continues lying on a shared disk system. Let's have a closer look on what that means. On a shared file system, the access to data is regulated by a permission system which has an internal list for every file stating you can read, write or execute it. In this example, Bob is allowed to read Alice's data and vice versa. Trudy, on the other hand, has no access to Alice's data, for now. The permissions list has to be written by someone, and if that someone makes a mistake, this might happen. By mistake, not Bob was allowed to read Alice's data, but Trudy was. She can now have a look at Alice's files and might find that not only is Alice's favourite dish pizza, but she now also knows the name of her first pet. Let's hope Alice never used Kitty as a password to a Google account. In a parallel universe, Alice is a smart girl, so she encrypted her data. And in this parallel universe, Trudy still gets access to her files, but all she sees is this. And although you should never use a pet's name as your password for anything, Trudy is not an immediate threat to Alice's Google account in this parallel universe. This is why I looked into encrypting data on supercomputers. So, before we dive into actual encryption algorithms and modes, let's have a look at how encryption works generally. A key and a plain text, in this case both binary, are combined to form a ciphertext. This combination can be, in the simplest case, an addition like this. To decrypt the new ciphertext, you would just do the reverse operation, in this case, subtracting the key from the ciphertext. Now, common encryption algorithms don't use addition, but a series of different mathematical operations to encrypt the plain text. These operations aim at diffusing the connection between plain text and ciphertext. A secure encryption algorithm is not unbreakable per se, but calculating the key takes more compute force than available. Those algorithms are effectively unbreakable. In my tests, I considered four different encryption algorithms, AES, Twofish, Serpent and Cast5. But I won't go into the details of their implementation here, there are two things to consider. One, they all remain unbroken and therefore secure, and two, they are all used as block ciphers. As you might have noticed in the example before, we needed a key of the same length as the plain text. Obviously, this is not applicable when encrypting gigabytes of data. Instead, the key has a predetermined size and the plain text is then split into blocks of the same length as the key. Every block is then encrypted separately by the key. There are different ways to apply a key over a series of blocks, or, more precisely, different encryption modes. The simplest encryption mode is the ECB mode. For every block of plain text, apply the preferred encryption algorithm with the same key. As you can see, this can be done in parallel and is therefore very fast. But, and it's a big but, this mode is highly deterministic because two blocks of plain text lead to the same ciphertext, which makes it a lot easier for an attacker to calculate the key used and then decrypt the entire message. The CBC mode introduces a randomization by applying an initialization vector. The vector is XORed with the plain text before applying the encryption algorithm. For every subsequent block, the previous ciphertext is used to diffuse the plain text before applying the encryption. Therefore, every block of ciphertext depends on the previous block and the initialization vector. Unfortunately, this encryption cannot be done in parallel. The last up is the XTS mode. It uses two keys. The first up here is itself encrypted by initialization variable and diffuses both the plain text and the ciphertext of every block. It is also changed slightly for every block, as you can see up here. The second key is used for actually encrypting the block. XTS also uses ciphertext sealing, which is a technique for when the data length is not divisible by the block size. The plain text of the last block is padded with the ciphertext from the previous block. Again, this mode can work in parallel. Now you have a basic idea of what to consider when encrypting a disk. Not only are there different algorithms, but also different modes. Since they work quite differently, they might also have a different impact on the performance. To look into this, I created a test environment similar to Surfsera's secure environment I told you about in the beginning. I set up two virtual machines, one acts as the host for the virtual machine to be benchmarked, and one acts as an NFS server, which contains the encrypted disk. For more details on this, I suggest you have a look at my final report, which is linked below. 
To benchmark the setup, I transcoded this 17 minute long video of a German news program. I did this in eight differently configured virtual machines, seven that were each encrypted differently and one that was not encrypted. In every configuration, five runs were performed. Let's have a look at the results. Here you can see how the encryption impacted the user performance. The non-encrypted setup is the green bar at the bottom. The impact of encryption on the user time is very low. The time needed is only increased by 0.5 to 3%. Things look different in system time. The performance is decreased by 13 to 30%. While this sounds like a lot, it is not completely crazy. If you really need to secure your data, it doesn't make working on a supercomputer preposterous to reason. So, what have we learned? Looking back at the process, I can say it's fairly simple to set up an encrypted disk for a virtual machine. The benchmark results show that the encryption does impact the performance, but only to a moderate extent. Also, they suggest that performance demands can be balanced with security demands, since different configurations of the encryption lead to different timings. Now, thanks to all of you for your attention, and enjoy my fellow SEMRHPC participants' presentation.